So before when we did the, the valuation, we used a weighted average cost of capital of 10%. Um, we just assume that because 10% is a round number. Uh, it's easy to calculate. It's easy to understand. But it's really not good because, you know, according to some of the academics, Oswald Damodaran being one of them, who's one of the world's foremost minds on valuation, says that a weighted average cost of capital of 10% would put them in the 98th percentile of cost of capitals for companies in the U.S. Uh, that's pretty high, particularly because this business, um, you know, is in is not in a pretty risky business so we probably want to change this from 10 percent to something else um, why why does it matter well let's see how this big of an impact this has on our valuation right now with 10 percent we have a share price of 93.89 and it's currently trading at 158 well, we have that on our multiple sheet all right so it's you know a, a pretty good investment at 10%. You'd want to buy this company because it's going to go up to. Oh, sorry, you'd want to sell this company because it's going to go down to 93. Um, if it's currently trading at 158 and it's worth 93, that's a bad investment. You might want to short that even. What if it's 9%? All right, the in, the implied share price should be uh, $110, and that's starting to look like you know a slightly more slightly better investment. 8%, it's getting close to what it's actually trading at, so you might you, you might not want to sell right now. You might still want to hold. At 7%, you definitely want to hold because the implied share price is above um, what it's currently trading at. So you can see from 7 to 10%, we are telling a completely different story. One is like a huge short, and the next one is either a hold or, you know, if, if you bought it low, maybe sell it. Um, so uh, we're going to change this back to 10%, but we're going to go and calculate this because it really, really does impact our valuation. The way we're going to calculate this is called the weighted average cost of capital method. Um, basically, it says that there are two sources of capital. There's debt and there's equity, and each have different costs. Uh, debt capital is the yield on that debt, usually. Um, it's a little bit easier to calculate. Equity is a little bit less tangible, right? How much does equity cost you? Well, it looks like it's free because you're not actually paying anyone back. But investors to invest in your company and give you capital actually expect a return. Um, so the cost of that capital is the return at which investors ex return that investors expect in order to invest in your company. And to calculate that cost of equity, equity we're going to use the CAPM formula, uh, which is you know, the, probably the widest used version of, of calculating this. It's still not perfect um, because it's hard to calculate this, but it's 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 the most used. And what the way we calculate it here is we say the cost of equity is equal to the risk-free rate, or the rate at which you can invest at no risk and get something back, and you add in a premium for investing in the market. Uh, two premiums here. One is the market risk premium, which is the premium at which uh, an equity market might differ from the risk-free rate. So if you're going to invest in a stock, you expect more back because it's riskier than a risk-free. And a beta adjusts for the industry. So if you're investing in a U.S. equity, you expect, let's say, a 5% market risk premium over the risk-free rate. But what if you invest in an equity stock that's really risky, like a tiny company that hasn't doesn't have any financials yet? Their beta is going to be huge because you want a much bigger premium for this, and so your cost of equity will go up. Um, whereas if you're investing in like a Walmart or something that's pretty protected by economic swings because the price is low, uh, their brand is good, the beta... The, the industry is pretty uh, resistant to market swings. The beta is going to be much lower, and you might actually need a smaller market risk premium to get into that equity. Uh, you'll see what we mean in practice when we do this. So the risk-free rate, or the risk at, at which you can invest for free, is you know usually seen to be the uh, usually said to be the 10-year Treasury rate, um, which is now around 2.241 according to CNBC, um, it, and it's gone from 3.5% to 1.5% and back and forth over the last five years. So we're going to use a 2.5% risk-free rate. Beta is, uh, you can look it up on Yahoo Finance. Um, levered and unlevered betas are different. Uh, you should keep that in mind, right? I don't know what this is, in, but I'm going to use it, is uh, 0.69. And the reason that this is a little bit of a concern is because different companies have different risks, partly because, um, you know, a riskier company has more debt and a riskless company has uh, uh, a less risky company has more equity generally. Um, so if you're using an industry average to calculate this beta and your industry has a lot of debt, but you do not, your beta might be different. 
Um, so we tend to unlever the beta, which means taking the financial risk out of it, and beta should only reflect business risk. Again, this is more advanced topics. You can look this up on your own if you're interested. I'm not sure which one this is, but we'll assume it's close. And then market risk premium, again, uh, Demodern says this should be between 3 and 5%. Um, basically, what people will do here is they'll look at historical market returns and make a guess for what this should be over a risk-free rate. Um, I'm going to put in 4% here, and we'll see what that gets us. So the cost of equity is this risk-free rate plus the beta times the, the market risk premium. And we're getting, I'll make this 4.5%, we're getting a cost of equity of about 5.6%. All right, so now it's time for the cost of debt. Where do we get cost of debt? Well, if the company has a bond rating, you can you know, see what their, mar their spread over you know, a treasury bond would be, and that's the cost of debt. Um, Buffalo Wild Wings, I couldn't find a bond rating for them, so I estimated it using DeModeran's spreadsheet here. Basically, it takes uh, some risk profile questions about the firm, their industry, how much money they make, how much interest they already pay, gives them a bond rating, and assigns a default spread based on that. I'm getting a default spread of 0.4% because this company has a lot of earnings and no interest. And we get an estimated cost of debt of 5.5%. All right. Uh, the market value of equity is going to be the, total, the sum of the, uh, the, you know, this is the market cap. It's the sum of all the shares in the market. That's 2.99 billion. I'm going to change this to millions. And if we had any debt, which we don't, we would have to make sure this is in millions as well. And then tax rate, uh, we use this because of a tax shield, but you can look this up in more detail later. There's a tax shield on earnings, on, uh, on debt. You, you take out taxes after you calculate the uh, interest and pay the interest. So there is a tax shield here. We're going to use their tax rate. of. This should be the marginal tax rate, which I think is 35%, but we're going to use 31% for now. Um, and then we need to calculate the equity to value and debt to value so we can easily do this calculation. Uh, value is the total capital. So I'm going to take the market value of the equity over the total capital, which is just the sum of market value of the debt and the market value of the equity. And so we're getting 100% value for equity and 0% value for debt. And that's right. Uh, let's say this company had a you know, million dollars in debt. Now they have 74% or 75% equity to value and 25% debt. So that means of this company's total cost of capital, 75% of it will come from this 5.6 and 25% of it will come from this 5.5. But again, we don't have any debt. So now we're going to calculate the weighted average cost of capital by doing the equity value times the cost of equity plus the debt to value times the cost of debt times 1 minus the tax rate. And we are going to get the cost of equity as the weighted average cost of capital because there is no debt. So now look at this. This is, uh, this is pretty telling right now. We went from a $93 valuation to a $245 valuation. So at a lower discount rate, I am going to buy this company up um, because you know, it has about $100 to grow out of this 158 that's a huge premium uh, or a huge discount to the stock if I actually believe this model. Um, maybe I don't. Maybe I believe the model and I don't believe the discount rate. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's do a data table so that we can actually see a different discount rate what this value comes out to be, and we can you know calculate what the issue is. Where do we want to buy and where do we want to sell? So with any data table, I'm going to put the implied share price in the top left corner. I'm going to make this axis my WAC. I'm going to actually do another axis for terminal value. Growth rate. That's this. It also impacts value a lot. So I want to do a two-axis model, um, two-axis data table with this terminal value growth rate. The terminal value growth rate, I'm going to do 0% to, I'll just make an increment of 0.5% here. So I'll do 0 to 3%. And for WAC rate, I'm going to do from 5% to basically however, however far this brings me. And 
and I will increment this by 1%. So from 5 to 10%, we'll be able to see uh, what the stock price looks like. Now I'll take this and do the data table, data, what if analysis, data table. My row input cell is the row, it's the weighted average cost of capital. And my column input cell is the terminal value growth rate. And so now I can see what my implied, I'm going to take the decimals out of here because there's no point in getting to that level of detail. We're not that exact here. Um, so now I can see at a 5% whack with a 0% terminal value growth rate, this company is actually undervalued. Um, but at a 10% growth rate, it's overvalued, at which point I should sell it. So I'm going to actually do something cool here. I'm going to conditional format this so I can easily see uh, which ones are overvalued and which ones are undervalued. So if it's less than $158, it's actually, if it, or if the implied value is less than $158, it's overvalued and I should sell. So I'm going to make that red. And if it's greater than $158, that means the implied stock price is actually higher than it's currently trading, which means I should buy. So I'm going to make this a green. And now I can very easily see, you know, if I believe that the discount rate is, you know, seven or below, this becomes a pretty good investment. The discount rate is above eight, no way, or above seven, really, no way. Um, so this is how we can pretty clearly see at what points we should be investing and what points we should not be investing. Is this a safe investment for us? Um, I think this discount rate, you know, is is way too sensitive uh, for me to feel comfortable with. I would have to really look at where my value is coming from in this model why most of the value is coming from later and not today um, and, and to figure out whether or not I would invest in this company. But this is the exercise that I would do to figure out what the cost of capital is um, and how to get more precise with my valuation. So I hope you enjoyed. Um, keep moving forward. We're going to do a couple other cool things with this model.